If it's getting cold and wet where you live, don't worry, stay tuned because I'm going to show you every single MTV tech hack to get you through the winter. But of course, first of all, everyone knows the best way to survive the season is to subscribe to GMBN Tech. But if you do already, give us a big old thumbs up. Winter socks are an absolute must. If your feet are warm, you feel warm. I really like Merino socks because they're woolly. They keep your feet warm, but they also stay warm when they're wet. So ideally top budget is getting yourself some Gore-Tex shoes like these. But if you don't have that, then mid budget might be some waterproof socks like these. Uh, but if you have no budget whatsoever, actually a plastic bag over your foot and inside your shoe will keep a lot of water out and a lot of heat in. Obviously some waterproof or some windproof gloves would be ideal, but if you don't have that, then just get a spare pair and put it in your pack for halfway through the ride. Also, don't underestimate how much warmth and waterproofness you can get from a pair of latex gloves. Consider swapping out your tinted lenses for some clear lenses if it's less sunny these days anyway, but you still wanna protect your eyes from all those mud flecks. Uh, some people even go full coverage with a pair of goggles. The worst thing about muddy rides is getting muck or even sheep poo all over your mouthpiece. So uh, invest in something with a little mouthpiece cover. You can buy these as attachments separately as well, or switch to your Camelback because you know, you can add your extra layers in your backpack as well anyway. Waterproof jackets are an absolute must to keep the muck off you and to keep you warm. And that's obvious, but don't forget to look after them. Gore-Tex needs proper washing, but anything with a DWR treatment is gonna need reproofing on a regular basis. On warm days, I wear thin trousers just to keep the muck off my legs. And on wet days, I wear waterproof trousers. And for really, really cold days, I'll even wear leggings underneath them. Woo -woo. Uh, if you're hardcore XC though, maybe you wanna consider getting some fleece lined shorts like these, and you can even get Gore-Tex and waterproof Lycra as well. Winter temperatures can be really unpredictable, so invest in a couple of options. I go for thin synthetics when it's raining because they dry quicker. I also go for merino when it's dry but cold because it's thicker and toastier. And then I also have some Polatec technology, which is basically fleecy but has gaps in it so that it can still breathe if you're working really hard. Also, consider some gilets underneath your jacket. I've got a down one which keeps you really, really warm but it does clump under wet weather so maybe a synthetic as well. These tiny pieces of material can make all the difference. This is a neck warmer and it will go around your neck and obviously trap all of the heat down and they make such a big difference. You can get these in wool and they're so tiny they can fit in your pocket for later anyway. Also maybe consider some ear warmers and a hat. After months of riding in wet weather, things can start to really reek. So actually an antibacterial spray will keep odors at bay and it dries really quickly. Alternatively, companies like Muckoff do actually do helmet washes and it's great on body armor as well. Flasks are a great way to keep warm. You can get a nice cup of tea that's small enough to fit in your bottle cage and go with you, or you can get a nice big one full of soup waiting for you when you're back in the van. Protect your bike. So invest in some wet weather lube because this is less likely to wash off halfway through your ride like dry lube will. And also consider some frame protection. All of that muck on your bike is likely to scratch and all that grit is gonna take your paintwork off. So do something like this and stop that from happening. Now, obviously mud guards are a great way of keeping muck and water spray out of your eyes when you're riding down the trail. But grip tape, have you thought about that? If you've been slipping off of your brake levers or you can't quite get the grip on your drucker lever, then something like this will just add a little bit of grip. Well, I promised you tech and here's some gadgets for you, some heated insoles, which you can recharge and they keep your feet warm for hours out on a bike ride. And then when you get home, 
why not get yourself a boot dryer which you can plug in and make sure that your shoes are nice and dry for the next ride the next day. If you're traveling to your riding destination in a vehicle, then consider using a mat changing mat like this. This is a muck off grind bag, which you can actually just step into and take all of your mucky clothes off of, and then just wrap it up into a bag to take home. Or if you don't have the budget for that, a really big bag might do it, or at least put all your mucky kit, your shoes and your helmet in something like this as well. And then if you're putting your bike in the back of your car, consider a boot liner like this, which will protect all of your car, protect the insides from getting mucky, or if you don't have the budget for that, then a lot of towels and a lot of blankets will do it, but it won't be as rugged. Right, time for some quick fire suggestions. Stuff newspaper in your shoes after your ride so that it absorbs all of the water. Don't use tissue paper though, that will disintegrate. Winter's the ideal time to try flat pedals when you're taking your feet off a lot and slipping around. It might be a nice time to learn some new skills. The evenings are dark, so get yourself some lights and force yourself to get out there. Night riding's a lot of fun. Get a big one on the bike and a little one on the helmet so that when you look around corners, you can still see. And also, if you ever ride on the roads to get back to where you started, make sure you get a red light on the back as well. In the winter, you're gonna be wearing a lot of kit, probably a backpack and covered in mud. You're gonna be heavier. Make sure you check your sag with all of your kit on and reset the air in your suspension. A changing robe or a really big towel will help you keep your dignity when you're getting changed out of your mucky kit in a car park. No one likes soggy sandwiches or wet kit, so if you've got the budget for it, a waterproof backpack like this Camelback Mule Evo is a star. Otherwise, get yourself a dry bag for all your kit or even a plastic bag in your backpack. If you wear a full face helmet, then consider a peak extension, either a purpose-built one or a homemade one, as these things will keep the water and the muck out of your eyes and off your goggles. It goes without saying that some good cleaning products will get you through those winter months and keep your bike looking and feeling fresh, but also consider a portable pressure washer like this, as it will clean your bike before it goes in the van or the car. And let's be honest, you're not gonna do it when you get home. When you're exercising in the wet, your glasses are more likely to fog up, so do consider some anti-fog treatment to stop that from happening. Don't just wipe mud and grit off of your glasses because it will just scratch the lenses. Make sure you rinse them under water and then use a proper goggle cleaner and a microfiber cloth to make sure you can still see through those grim winter months. Grease is not just for assembling your bike, it'll keep water and grit at bay from things like bearings. So slap a load on places like headsets to keep the muck out. Winter tires are a must, not just for grip, but also you could switch to something of a much tougher compound so that they last longer. Save your summer tires for the summer. This might sound silly, but get yourself some moisturizer and something like a chapstick to protect your lips. Even some petroleum jelly will do the trick. It'll stop you from getting windburn on the face and from getting cracked lips as well. Oh, I think I've got everything there, but uh, if I've missed anything out, let me know down in the comments below, what is your top MTB winter hack or tech for these horrible gloomy seasons? Oh, I'm going home.